Here we go. If you save yourself for marriage, you're a bore. If you don't save yourself for marriage, you're a horrible person. If you won't have a drink, then you're a prude. But they'll call you a drunk as soon as you down the first one. If you can't lose the weight, then you're just fat. Rude. But if you lose too much, then you're on crack. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. So you might as well just do whatever you want. So make lots of noise, kiss lots of boys, or kiss lots of girls if that's something you're into. When the Straight and narrow gets a little too straight Roll up a joint, or don't Just follow your arrow wherever it points Yeah, follow your arrow wherever it points Wherever it points No matter who it is Unless it's Trump, then no If you don't go to church, you'll go to hell if you're the first one on the front row, you're a self-righteous son of a can't win for losing. You'll just disappoint them just cause you can't beat them. Don't mean you should join them. So make lots of noise, kiss lots of boys, or kiss lots of girls if that's something you're into when the Straight and narrow gets a little too straight Roll up a joint or don't Just follow your arrow wherever it points Yeah, follow your arrow wherever it points Say what you think Love who you love Cause you just get so many trips around the sun Yeah, you only only live once Now come on Hands together now On three, sing along One, two, three So make lots of noise Kiss lots of boys Or kiss lots of girls If that's what you are into When the straight and narrow Gets a little too straight Roll up a joint I would and follow your arrow wherever it points, yeah Follow your arrow wherever it points Oh yeah Follow your arrow wherever it points Thank you. Stop. Stop. Stop it. Stop it now. Stop it. Oh, hello everyone. Welcome to Forest Gate Pride, everybody. Oh, I know. My name is Crystal Lubricant. I'm a talentless man in a wig, self-proclaimed, and I'm here to host this digital event full of absolute fabulosity to celebrate LGBTQ plus history month with you. I'm so excited to be hosting. I hope you enjoyed my little opening number there, my darling. I've got another one in store later on in the show. But for now, let's get things rolling. What goes well with a queen, you say? A king, baby. Next up, direct from London, we have the Dapper Dynamo. The wonderful, the fabulous leader of the kings of clubs. It is king, king Frankie, Frankie Sinatra. Sinatra. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm going to do something from now, and I'm going to do something from then. Let's start with something from now. Thanks for the times that you've given me the memories are all in my mind It's not all in my mind actually And we never come 
come to the end of our rainbow but there's something I must say out loud what could it be? you're once twice three times a lockdown I know of you Yes, you're once Twice Three times a lockdown I know of you I love You share my dreams, my joy, my pain. You've made my life worth living for. And if I had to live last year over again, I'd spend each and every moment indoors. I went out far too often, I tell you. It must have been at least eight times. You're once, twice, three times a lockdown. I love you. Yes, you're once, twice, no time's a charm, three times a lockdown. I love you. I love you. I mean, really, all I've had to do is stay in, isn't it? Back of my neck's nice and warm. My hair's got a life of its own. I've bought something I never thought I would own. I've got a shower cap. Lockdown one. Ah, the first time. Those moments I cherish. With every beat of my heart. Lockdown too was confusing, but still quite amusing. Number oh, three is where the fun really starts. How are you breaking up the day? Can I suggest biscuits? As a country, we eat more biscuits than anyone else in the world. And I like to think I've done my bit for the national effort. Start the day with a chocolate finger. Lunchtime is a bourbon. Afternoon television calls for a jammy dodger, doesn't it? Don't bother with digestives and rich tea. They're not rich tea, they're poor tea, they're boring. And as for a rice cake, it's not a cake. Don't invite it. And you can walk. The magic number is 10,000. That's the number of steps you have to do a day, the number of words you have to speak, and the number of times you pick up your phone and forget why. You're one, twice. Three times a lockdown I love you Yeah, lockdown 
I love you. I've got lovely clean hands. I've got happy house plants. I've got a puppy. I've developed a gratitude attitude. I've learned to slow down. Because one day, this will be over and we'll go back to busy London life and the hustle and bustle and we'll look back on this and go, oh, wasn't all bad. Thank jolly big rest. So thank you, lockdown. Thanks for everything. I love you. I love you. And I've got my I just want to take the time right now to say thank you for our team making things accessible here today at Forest Gate Pride. Giving us some pride in February and making sure we remember our history and celebrate it. But up next, I think it's time for a bit of a tune. What say you, my darlings? Heard on BBC Radio 6, I'm so excited to present Miri, Miri everybody. everybody. Hi, my name's Miri, and it's really special uh, to be here to perform some songs for you. Uh, I've been living in Newham now for 21 years, and so many years ago I would have never thought there would be an opportunity like this to celebrate and mark LGBT History Month, so thank you so much for having me. This first song I'm going to sing is um, my most recent single, which I released last year, for World Mental Health Day, and it's called Just Breathe. I am here for you, like 
like you've been here for me just breathe you can call on me i'll be the safe space that you need feel free life can get so rough you're an angel lost from love Cried fear, you brought tears. The world isn't always safe, being yourself makes you brave and sincere. Coast isn't clear, which is why I am here for you, like you've been here for me. Just breathe You can call on me You'll be the safe space that you need Feel free The outside isn't always fun Being inside can feel so numb And closed in You're not a sin it's so easy to get trolled Feels so hard not to let it show That it hurts Hateful words burn Which is why I am here for you Like you've been here for me Just breathe Be the safe space that you need. Feel free. Da 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 Just breathe You can call on me You'll be the safe space that you need Feel free The second and last song I'm going to perform for you is my track called Good Ones. If you like what I do and you'd like to support, you can follow me on my socials at Miri Official UK. Uh, you can also find all my other links on my website miriofficial.com, which also includes links for my Find Your Voice t-shirts. This one uh, I launched especially for LGBT History Month and you can stream my music on a wonderful streaming service uh, called Sunstream. Uh, thank you so much for having me, uh, sending the most love to all of you and this one is Good Ones. <laughs> Prosper 
No more sorrow cause we found our way yeah. We found our way beneath the day Yeah, 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 yeah. We keep on loving We keep on living I got my pride socks on too. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miri, for that beautiful performance. Next up, we're going to take things down here at Forest Gate Pride with a bit of spoken word from the wonderful Ramanik Aliwalia. Sometimes it seems like the world is one big form, checking boxes to see how we score on a scale of one to normal. Name, title, sex, a poor attempt to understand something so complex, so grand beyond woman and man, we do everything we can to suppress it. Shots poured, shots fired, pills to morning keeping us wired, desperate attempts to smother that lingering feeling of other. Otherness, a thing we reserve for the unknown, a thing we deny, we all know. We live in the confines of our walls, no acknowledgement of our connection to all. But what if we looked at each other's stories? What if we ask questions instead of ignoring? To know thyself is the beginning of wisdom and putting us in boxes puts us in prison. The boxes on the page ask our age and sexuality. We give them the power to define our humanity. I am a queer mixed heritage woman. My story is a conflict of identity, of pain, of heartbreak, not knowing who I'm meant to be, cultivating armor as another me so the world won't see me as otherly, wasting so much energy, dimming down a light inside of me until finally I began to ache. I realized the absurdity, rediscovered the veracity of the younger me and went on a journey of love and self-discovery, exploring my sexuality, finding my voice. And finally being the real me. My story is not unique. It belongs in no category, not filed under LGBT or defined by ethnicity. Passed down through generations, it's been written universally, shaping our history. Segregation, integration, immigration, liberation, it fuels the fight for equality. It's a daily battle to stand up or blend in, to give in to the fear or to own yourself, the colour of your skin, whether you're straight or queer. Rejecting the playground lessons, telling us we are lesser, to fight against conformity, to remove the divide between you and me. There is power in the other. There is power in listening to each other. There is power in listening to each other. Thank you so, so much, Romanique, for that. That was beautiful. Next up, we have one of the finest kings in London, my gorgeous friend, fantastic performer, gonna spoil us with some cabaret festivities right now. Make some noise, put your hands together for Benjamin, for Benjamin Butch. Butch.
For Benjamin Butch, everybody. Now, from one fine cabaret talent to the next, I'm so thrilled to introduce the next performer. They have bettered me as a performer. They have made me think of more accessible ways I can reach out to my audiences. This blind, non-binary, bisexual drag king wants us to smell the world through their nose. Give it up for Tito, Tito Bone. Bone. Hi, Noodle! Oh, it's so nice to talk to you, to Zoom with you. I mean, I can't see you because I am your average blind, non-binary, bisexual drag king, but it's really nice to chat to you. Oh, you're such a beautiful cat, so fluffy and white with black patches on your nose and your head and your tail and your bum. Oh. And no, I'm not at the beach, if you're wondering. This is just a background. And I'm actually in my pajamas, which is a, you know, sleeveless sequin tailcoat, bow tie, glitter beard, matching eyebrows, buzz cut, and absolutely no trousers. Standard. And um, I know you're a bit sleepy, but I hope you don't mind just having a chat, because you're such a good listener. And you know, last time we were talking, I was telling you about what it was like before the pandemic for me. And all the, the things that I had to go through to learn how to do drag and, and really find my niche in the drag world, in the queer world. And I mean, well, I just, I remember it all so clearly. Dream sequence, shifting wobbly screen, new scenery that is definitely not just Tito standing in front of a pink bedsheet that's been hung up on the Because, I mean, bringing deaf and disabled people onto your stages, making your shows accessible, well, it's really important. But it, it's always for me like, look at this club, isn't it neat? So much potential for people to meet. Wouldn't you think they're the queers, the queers who have everything? Look at this stage for stories untold. But I mean, how many non-disabled cis white gay men can one venue hold? Looking around here, you think. Sure. They've got everything. They've got costume and makeup aplenty. They've got lace fronts and glitter galore. You want talent? They've got plenty. But for me, there's no deal. I'm stuck at the door. I want to be where the drag creatures are. I want to learn how they do their dancing. Why is it so hard to include things like, what's the word? Audio description? Lip syncing won't really get me far If vision's required to learn that drag skill Access should really be more than a What's the phrase? Buzzword! Not everyone talks, not everyone runs But that doesn't mean we don't have any fun The disabled aren't free But I wish we could be part of your world what would I give if I could live beyond these barriers? What would I pay to spend a day with my own drag clan? It might seem quite grand, but understand that I'm not asking for your whole kingdom. Bright young-ish drag king, sick of waiting, ready to go. People know. Ask them my questions and get some answers. What is spirit gum and why does it? What's the word? Burn. When's it my turn? Wouldn't I love, love to explore the drag in the club? Dramatic freeze. The disabled aren't free. But I wish we could be part of your world. And now, hold your 
your applause as I perform one of the major tenets of drag, the reveal! Off comes the tailcoat to show you my... clams. And of course by clams I mean clam-shaped pasties covering the nipples of my otherwise bare breasts. Thank you. Out of dream sequence, wobbly scream, back to Zoom, but Tito doesn't have a shirt on. So yeah, I mean, you get it, don't you, Noodle? It's just it's just a bit tough when people don't think about making stuff accessible or bringing deaf and disabled people into their shows. But, you know, it's not as bad as it was because I do drag now. I'm doing drag right now. I mean, Noodle? Noodle, are you still there? Is that a rainbow poo emoji pillow? Oh, she's gone. Cats. Thank you so much, Tito. That was wonderful. Now we're just gonna keep on bringing you some drag, baby. Drag, drag, more drag. All the drag you want here at Forest Gate Pride. And our next performer is no exception. Make some noise at home. Stamp your feet, clap your hands together for Gypsy, Gypsy Von, Von Jagger. Jagger. Pride is holding his hand whilst they stare. Boy is princess whipping their hair. A universal knowing that you are truth. Reclaiming words, yes I am a poof. Tearing down binary through our identity. Two mothers, chosen parent her destiny. Uplifting worldwide, brothers and sisters, and those in between whose magic glitters. Golden lines that appear, one from giggles. Our tribe dancers with no cares, we love a wiggle. The inner work that we do, sooner than most. Some people are born fabulous, get over it we toast. Vigilant to fear, always leading with kindness. Hearts open, smiles wide, shining your brightness. We teach others by example, that love is love. We are heavenly. We are proud, star children above. Abracadabra! Oh, thank you so much, Victoria, for that magnificent, magical performance. We are slowly but surely coming to the end of our event. I know, I know. All good things must come to an end, my darlings. But without further ado, we still have fabulous performances left. And next is no exception. The multi-hyphenate performer, the one and only, the Mollusk, the mollusk dimension. dimension! Hello, everyone. <clears throat> My famous bisexual aching joints. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a few different types of crushes. Well, to begin with, here's an audio description. Uh, I'm an East Asian person and I'm wearing a hat uh, which is dark grey and kind of like a bit like a trilby. Uh, which covers my hair. I've got eyeliner on. I'm wearing a dark red shirt and like a sun-shaped ornate brooch which basically used to belong to my grandma actually. Around it there's like a black 80s geometric bead necklace and I'm seated on this um, lovely sofa which is dark red. It also has a section with wide black and white stripes and I'm flanked by these um, velvet brown cushions, which you can hear me stroking. <laughs> That's it for the audio description. Some other bits of video, which may not be audio described, but they should be described in the transcript. So crush number one, had a breakup, a lockdown pandemic breakup, and um, my ex-boyfriend um, is really into Queen, and when we were together, <clears throat> I promise I won't spend the whole time talking about my ex, not that this is a first date or anything, when we were still together, um, 
we would get takeout sometimes and so I would be eating my plantain and listening to Freddie Mercury and so yeah um, this is my version of this much beloved Queen song which I hopefully won't ruin for you and it's the Transquirian Rhapsody. Also, I don't really want to go into it too much, but I did have a little bit of corona racism, uh, which actually had quite an impact on, on me. And so that explains where this song kind of goes, basically. Things are not all fine, but this body, it is mine. Parents, death has spat me out, and now I'm wondering what's beyond. Parents, I I don't want to cry Society fake tears anymore Stop right there, stop right there Cause Asians are feelings too Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that now for crush number two. Well, this is about lust as a motivational factor for exercise. And so before I kind of go into it, um, if you're my fitness instructor, can you please stop watching right now? Okay. I attended her Zoom workout and I felt so good afterwards. I had a bit of an exercise instructor crush. I was actually afraid of attending more sessions uh, in case like this develops into some kind of infatuation. It's like I have enough going on in my life at the moment without having to worry about an infatuation as well. I'm melting, I'm melting, oh what a world, destroying my beautiful wickedness. Oh. I dried off yet. So basically I uh, found out about this thing called cake crushing and um, yeah I, I'm not gonna do any cake crushing but I was wondering um, if if I was a cake who would I want to crush? Paris. Crush number four Okay, so if you have seen my video for Land of Hope and Glory, you might think that I'm being really negative about the Tories. And basically, that's true. Uh, but also, have I ever learnt anything from them? Let me think. Um, yes, they have taught me to crack eggs and hammer nails and also crush cardboard boxes. Basically, you might already know this, um, but I figured out, like, if you've got a cardboard box that you want to recycle, instead of, like, breaking it open with your hands, what you can do is you can wear shoes and stand inside it and break it open with your feet, and it's a lot of fun. Bet you weren't expecting to hear that when you tuned in today. Why am I still not seeing people of colour doing DIY on TV? Good afternoon. I am Edgar Allan Keyes Poe. Firstly, you remove the white knobs. And secondly, you hang on to these because you never know when you might want to screw. Ooh, I, I can hear one of you laughing out there. That makes my queer heart very happy. Now I'm going to make a bum joke, but before I do that, I just want to tell you that 
some of the older white women at the dog park covet my bum. Yeah, they told me. They were like, ooh, wish I had your bum. I don't go there anymore. But that's not all. I had this idea that I could do this act where one of my bum cheeks is Boris Johnson and the other one is Ian Duncan Smith. But then I was like, who would want to see that? And you know that meme where Tory MPs are like shoes? <laughs> I think that's really funny. I really want to see that again, but I just can't find it anymore. I don't know what's happened to it. So if you know where to find that meme, then please let me know. Because you know, like, I think it's really great to be creative and think about like new shapes and, you know, new ways of like turning like pain into pleasure. It's, it's inspired me to think about Tory MPs as like butt plugs. Okay, now I'm on to my fifth crush, which is ignorance. The state doesn't want you to think too much. The state doesn't want you to think full stop. Which topics won't mainstream media touch? While black and brown Tories race to the top. Does your school teach you how not to sleepwalk? Whose histories matter and whose are concealed? Research revolt and stop burning Guy Fawkes. Research the rich who are to the crown kneeled. Fight the bigotries taught so foggily that we're not aware we don't self-reflect. Can we decolonize the bully? Where is the crumble the empire effect? Society learns from state papers, school. Ignorance is corruption's best tool. Why does this man take up so much space? So much time, so much space Just like them, we long to be spacious Just like them, we long to be Before I invite you to my next show, I want to tell you about some of my other projects and the first one was Breaking the Spell, which is a queer takedown of uh, Queen Elizabeth I by Bird Le Bird, who's a queer legend and it's on the National Maritime Museum website. The second project is Adventures in Time and Gender, which is a podcast um, about a young trans person um, and a talking suitcase who travels through time and meets um, loads of trans people, gender non-conforming people and people who studied uh, about gender and sexuality and it was really interesting to kind of listen to and, and learn about you know this hidden history and number three is um, Monster Tea DIY Kids Show is a YouTube show that I made with some other queers, including Bean Pig Puppets. And yeah, if you remember things like Jack and Ori, then you might especially enjoy it because it's like slightly on the creepy side, but it's just, it's a lot of fun. I hope you, yeah, check it out. I'm also really excited to tell you about a show I have coming up on Thursday, April the 8th, which is with Chinese Arts Now. And in that show, I'm going to be um, exploring some work that I've made, like my album. It could well be the first album, uh, it's the first album that I've heard of that's by a British-born 41-year-old Chinese trans mask artist and I'm going to be talking about the process of creating that um, with um, my collaborator and creative partner, Yuri Jo, uh, who was also featured on the album in in an audio and visual way 
Um, and I'm also going to be sharing some other bits of work, some new work and uh, a book that I'm going to be writing. Um, it's my first hour long show and it's on Thursday 8th of April with Chinese Arts Now. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm at The Mollusk Dimension, uh, the same on Facebook. And on Twitter, I'm at Mr. Gloomy Tunes. I also have a website, um, themolluskdimension.com, where um, I'm beginning to archive um, my work. Uh, and a really big thanks to Forest Gate Pride for inviting me to take part in this year's show. I feel really privileged to have been able to share with you about my crushes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned to find out what else is going on, support the other artists, stay safe and remember Asians have feelings too. Bye for now. I'm going to take you on a journey of the unexpected. Bollocks. Next up, we're going to give you a barrel of laughs. How about that? A little bit of laughter. A little bit of a comedy. I don't mind if I do. Do you? Gorgeous. Welcome our next performer, giving us a bit of stand up. Make some noise, stamp your feet, clap your hands, sing to the rooftops. For Charlie, for Charlie George. George. <laughs> Hello. Um, it's always been my dream, ever since I was a little girl, um, to perform to no one, alone, in my room, um, ideally for some kind of LGBTQ History Month, for Forest Gate, ideally. Um, so really, I am. Uh, it's a high honour to be here. Like any normal person, um, I just want. Um, I just want a full a full green suit uh, and I've sprayed myself with perfume. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's to feel alive. Um, but I'm delighted to be here. I'm going to do a set for you. Um, uh, I mean, I'll do what I can with what I've got. Uh, I've got a little lamp. I'm in a room alone. There's a cable connected to the internet that's been gaffer taped very precariously to the window. I think one thing we can agree on in these very divisive times is that you only get one self and that it needs improving yeah um so i actually decided this lockdown uh i'm gonna quit smoking yeah I've quit smoking cigarettes and i've taken up incense yeah i'm currently on 20 nag champa a day and i'm not gonna lie same amount of smoke same dirty looks but you know it feels more sacred Everyone's got their own journey towards consciousness, haven't they? You know, you can't rush it. You cannot rush it. <sighs> if I could quote Gandhi here, I think he said, um, be the problem you want to see in the world. And uh, I've really been trying to channel, channel that this year. Um, I've actually got into this uh, new thing called the mindfulness. Are you familiar with the mindfulness? Right, it's essentially um, where you sort of look inside your mind and you go, oh, fuck. Uh, and then you try not to make it worse. Um, uh, and I've actually been doing different types of practices in an online course, uh, and I've learned some uh, interesting bits of wisdom. One of them uh, is a new meditation practice, and you can take this one from me, uh, very helpful if you're having a bit of a stressful time right now in your living situation. So essentially what you do is you just sort of inhale really deeply and then hold your breath and then turn to face each corner of your room and exhale while screaming. Now, my housemates have asked me to move out, but, you know, I feel more centred. Um, another bit of wisdom uh, that I gleaned from the course um, and that I've been kind of trying to work on this year is like healing some of the wounds of the past and, uh, you know, where to begin. <laughs> which one to choose from. So I thought I'd share a story with one of the stupidest lies I've ever told with you. Um, to probably explain that um, I come from a place far, far away called the idea you can save a marriage. 
and Swindon. Now, if you're not familiar with Swindon, um, it's a town in Wiltshire. Uh, it's probably most famous for a roundabout. That's magic, yeah! Because all the millennials that grow up there, right, they just sort of keep returning and going round and round in concentric circles of unemployment until they reach self-actualization and are released on the M25 to Bristol. I was actually raised devout Jehovah's Witness, yeah? Because Swindon wasn't enough. Um, if you're not familiar with the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, you might have hid from us when we came knocking on your door. Uh, and we were forced to do that, yeah? Most parents teach their children about the danger of strangers. I was sent out in a skirt, hoping to be lured into their homes. I did break away from that religious life, and as a result, um, I have quite a lot of self-loathing about who I am as a person. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I said break away, I was actually kicked out of home for my sexuality. I really is, I don't even really know what my sexuality is anymore, you know. Um, sexual history is like internet history, isn't it, you know. throws up a lot of questions and you don't want to live them all out. Um, I think I'm probably pansexual slash bisexual. But you can't say that where I grew up because that's like saying you're like oasis and blur, you know. Pick a team, it's raw. I don't know why people are so obsessed with gender, you know, it's not the genitals that make a relationship, is it? It's the deep-rooted personality flaws and fear of dying alone. I was obsessed with this rare form of self-harm growing up. Some of you might have heard of it. It's called falling in love with straight girls. Uh, there's very few women in Wiltshire whose hair I haven't braided and sniffed whilst they've complained to me about their boyfriends. Uh, but when I uh, left home, I actually moved to Bristol when I was 16, right, to go to circus school. Mm, yes, I went to circus school. Not one of the posh ones in France or Canada, the one for wayward shithead teens uh, in the West Country. And, you know, I owe a lot to Bristol, uh, I'll be honest, mainly harem pants and ketamine. Um, anyway, once I moved there, I progressed from straight girls to lesbians in relationships with known gang members. Yeah! We can all look forward to the Netflix special where I introduce you to my death row wife. Uncivil partnership. This girl's name was Rosie. She was magnificent. And we started this hot affair at circus school. Sign me up for the Mills and Boone novel now. Um, there was just one teeny tiny problem. Like Rosie had a terrifyingly built girlfriend called Erica. Now, I know we're a pretty moralistic generation and I wouldn't want you to judge me at this point, so I should explain myself. I was 16 and she was really, really fit. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen anyone in a tight leotard fall off a trapeze into a crash mat on top of you before, but it is hot. Uh, so hot that I nearly forgot about Erica. Um, now, where I was into performing arts and poetry, Erica, was into cocaine and fighting. I'm not a fighter, okay? In a fight between me and Erica, my consciousness would leave my body immediately and form some kind of existential contemporary dance piece about the nature of violence above me as I was. Pummel to death. I always thought, right, that I'd meet the love of my life somewhere quiet, you know, maybe unexpectedly, in a library as our hands reach for the same philosophy book. We'd walk hand in hand through the park in matching jumpers. <sighs> to say I felt out of place on the gay scene is to say that a circus performer's favourite move is their head in the mouth of a lion. I hated it. <sighs> Speakers blaring, tinny chart music at your temples as you stood on the sticky floor surrounded by loads of men who dominated the space. Nothing wrong with men. There was all kinds of them. They were all very lovely. Big variety of men. You had the big beardy men, the shiny twinky ones, the short spiky haired resty men. All the men. And then one small group of women in two tribes of butch and femme. So I'm sat in this nightclub, right, and I'm having a terrible time. Uh, I don't want to be there, and I've only gone because Rosie is there, and I wanted to see her. Uh, now, I do this thing, some of you might do this, uh, where essentially I uh, feel awful, but my face is just like, yeah, let's all have a really great time.
Uh, and essentially, I'm watching Erica kiss Rosie's neck and I want to die inside. Um, and then Erica is there on this night outright with these mates. Right? I call them the three witches because they perfectly prophesize what kind of carnage Fridays and Saturday nights are going to be. And all out, out of the blue, right, all of sat around, uh, one of them, who's particularly terrifying, unexpectedly puts her arm around me and says, now brace yourself because I'm about to do a Bristol accent now. And it is devastatingly sexy. So she puts her arm around me and she goes, why don't you come home with me? Oh, how can I resist? Rosie immediately does this knee-jerk jealousy reaction and says, um, Charlie doesn't like butch girls. First of all, inaccurate. Second of all, why are you trying to blow her cover? Erica immediately leans forward, puts her arms on Rosie, Rosie's and says, how the fuck would you know what she likes? Oh, I'm going to get my head kicked in. I'm going to get my head kicked in. Then Rosie does this save, right? And she leans forward and she's like, no, it's just that she likes this girl that we both know at college. And I'm there like, yeah, yeah, the girl at college. <sighs> Sweating. And then Rosie right, goes to the bar to get some drinks and leaves me alone with this pack of vultures, right? And I'm thinking, ah, oh, just don't ask anything. Just don't say anything, don't say anything, and it'll be fine. Erica immediately leans towards me and says, so what's her name? Now, I don't know if you ever had to come up with the name of a fake love interest on the spot before, but it is stressful. Thing. And I'm looking around me for something, anything, that isn't a box of neon straws or a sign for the toilet to give me some knees on a name. And I've got nothing, so I just panic and I go, Julie, Julia, Julia Andrews. Rosie, right, comes back from the bar carrying this tray of Sambuca shots. How do I know it's Sambuca? The smell arrives first. And I try and intercept her really quickly and I'm making these wide eyes, my eyebrows are raised and I'm like, remember Julia? No, she was a nun, but now she's a nanny. She goes to our soccer school and Rosie's just looking at me like, you absolute moron. And Erica is onto us and staring us both down and everyone grabs a shot glass and raises a toast to Julia Andrews. And it wouldn't be fair, really, um, to not, you know, share some of the wisdom that I've um, that I've learned from doing this course um, so that you have something to take away from this experience. Um, <coughs> life is like the pages in a book. You should half listen to the podcast instead and then give ill-informed advice about it to everyone you know. If you want to be healthier but are struggling to make dietary changes this year. Why not try sending your Deliveroo rider up a nearby hill instead of your home address? Play Kate Bush as you run towards your takeaway. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, especially if you're standing behind a relative or housemate who's trying to concentrate on some carefully coordinated cross-stitch. They'll scream in delight. Want to have a body like Kim Kardashian, but can't be bothered to do thousands of tiny little leg lifts? Why not use that leftover sage and onion stuffing to fill the lining of your pants? Thrifty and lifted. It doesn't matter what anyone says. How many followers you have online, the colour of your skin, how much money you have, people will always find a way to hate you. So learn a martial art. Um, I chose capoeira myself, uh, or as I like to call it, Brazilian Tinder. You know, instead of swiping right, you just go around in a circle, um, aggressively kicking at the object of your affection while someone plays the tambourine. Um, what consumes your mind controls your life. So stop thinking about biscuits. Pow! Thank you so much, Charlie, my love. Giving us a bit of a giggle here or there, my loves. Next up, I think it's time for, for some magic. Woo! You know. Come on, my loves. Make some noise for our own private magician this evening, Victoria, Victoria Elizabeth. Elizabeth. 
Good evening, it's Victoria Elizabeth from Manor Park, the magic lady. So I hope you're all having a good lockdown. No, neither am I. But I did get a nice present during the first lockdown. I got this lovely thing here. This is a nice present. It came from my old gran. They said she was a witch. And she brought me this. I wasn't sure what it was at first. I wasn't sure if it was a handkerchief or a scarf. But she said to me, that's actually a breakfast napkin. Yeah, breakfast napkin. She said it's a very special breakfast napkin. She said this breakfast napkin, if you keep that with you forever and you never ever lose it, with just a little bit of magic, you should be able to have your favourite breakfast every single morning. Sounded good to me. So every single morning of lockdown, I've had the perfect breakfast. A glass of vodka and orange. Cheers. <laughs> Additional benefit, it's one of my five a day. Cheers. Mm. Thank you very much. So I learned everything I know about financial management from a trans woman. Yeah, an old transsexual I used to know. She used to live up in a house all on her own. And she had a very strange form of financial management. She, What she used to do, she used to have no money in her house at all. Not a penny. But she always used to keep her old leather purse with her. And her old leather purse, she, I don't know how she got the shops to accept them but she used to pay for everything with these three silver crowns can you see them and uh, she had no other money at all that's all she had was these three silver crowns and uh, what she used to do she was a creature of habit she used to go into town every single day with her three silver crowns solid silver crowns none of your dodgy stuff she used to take her three solid silver crowns and she used to take the first one and she used to blow it she used to blow it entirely on makeup and dresses the second solid silver crown she'd take that one with her empty hand she'd take that one And she'd blow that one too. She'd blow that one on alcohol. <laughs> and the third solid silver crown, she used to take that one as well and <laughs> she used to blow that one entirely on takeaway food in the cab fare home so she used to do that every single day as a habit she used to wake up the following morning in her bed all on her own just like I do with a terrible headache and a dreadful hangover and she'd take her little leather purse and she'd do a little bit of magic because she had magic powers because all trans women have magic powers it's a known fact known fact throughout history all trans women have magic powers and she do a little bit of magic and her three solid silver crowns would reappear back inside her purse just like that and she'd be ready to start a brand new day thank you very much <laughs> so i tell you what if we were doing a real life show i'd be able to show you that these three solid silver crowns are genuine three solid silver crowns and they are very high quality and I tell you what seeing as it's not a real life show and you're not sitting here in front of me I'm just going to leave them here for you to uh, examine them here but uh, uh, just reach through that screen and examine the three solid silver crowns there you are so there you are thank you very much <laughs> let's just move this over here so you can see that I've got a fruit bowl there's no fruit in it though unfortunately 
but you can't get everything you want in life, can you? But it's a fruit bowl, nonetheless. I also have one green ball, and I'm going to try and keep this. as simple as possible. It's a tap with my magic wand, my amazingly powerful magic wand. Watch closely. Uh, and the ball has disappeared. Wave and a tap for the magic wand. The ball whew, is out of the bowl. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that happened so fast. You'd like to see it again. Am I right? Shall I do it again? If I can find the hole, I've got another ball in here. Shall I do it again? I'll do it again. Watch closely. I'm going to do it slower this time. You see, it's all in the blow. And the tap of the magic wand. A lot slower. And the ball has disappeared. Wave and a tap and a magic wand. The ball is under the bowl. Now, ball number three, I do differently. Ball number three, if I can find it. Ball number three. I always have problems finding the hole, just as my boyfriend used to say that. Wave and a tap and a magic wand, and I should be able to force a ball through this solid. Reinforce steel tabletop and into the bowl from below. It's very simple. Watch closely. Oh. One, two, three. Well, ball number four, I get a place in the other hand because it's not my hands which are magic. It's not even my balls which are magic. It's me and my magic wand. That's what's magic. Because all trans women have magic powers. I told you that already. <laughs> Watch closely. Oh, it's a miracle. Wave and a tap and a magic wand, the ball. One, two, three, four. Now, I tell you what, there's a choice now. We can either use this ball here, this ball here, this ball here, or this ball here. Ball number one, two, three, or four. I'm going to select any one at random, and it's going to be this one here. And it's going to be a blow and a tap and a magic wand. I'm going to place this ball here deep within the folds of my beautiful magician's outfit if you can all see that i did get this beautiful magician's outfit especially for this show and uh two years ago off ebay but it's going to go right in here if i can find the hole oh quite fairly there's no mucking around here this is proper real genuine magic it's none of that mucking around tv magic you see this is proper Genuine magic, folks. Now watch closely. It's going to be a way for the amazingly powerful magic wand and a tap and a blow. And ball number three should travel magically back under the ball, under the bowl. That's proving both it and I are magic. Is he there? One, two, three, four. Now you've got a choice. Now you can either have this pair here or this pair here. If you want me to use this pair here, give me a big cheer. I can't hear you. If you want me to use this pair here, give me a big shout. I can't hear you, people in Newham. I'm going to give this pair here a blow, okay? We're going to select this one at random. Okay, we can, we can be awkward. We can use this pair here if you like. It's up to you. We can use any pair. It doesn't matter. It didn't really matter, you know? But uh, it's best than arguing. Just get on with it. So we're going to give this, this, one, this pair here. A blow of the amazingly powerful magic wand and a wave and a tap and uh, a blow of my magical breath. I did that already. I'm going to place each one deep within the folds of my aforementioned beautiful magician's outfit. This one's going to go in here quite fairly. No mucking around. And this one's going to go in here. 
if I can find the hole. <sighs> Quite fairly. There you are. Now, I'm not even going to stand near the bowl this time. I'm going to stand over here and I'm going to give away for my amazingly powerful magic words, magical wand. And I'm going to say the magic words. And the magic words are Alakazam, Alakazair, place under the bowl, the chosen pair. Now, tap of the wand. Now, is the chosen pair the pair that everybody, the people of Newham, chose? Is it under the bowl? What do you think? Is it under the bowl? Should we have a look? Well, like I said, you can't get everything you want in life, can you? But uh, isn't that a lovely looking pair? Eh? <laughs> and uh, I tell you what, additional benefit, that's one of my five a day as well. Mm. So, thank you very much. My name's Victoria Elizabeth, the magic lady from Manor Park, from Newham, from London, from the world. Thank you very much. Good night. Evening. God, what an evening it's been so, so far. I want to extend my love to all the performers this evening and my love to Forest Gate Pride for putting this together. A little pride event from home. Next up, we're going to have some poetry, my darlings. You know, tantalise the poetry senses. And to do so, we bring on Yaz Nikati. You wanted me to be hard like a bullet. But I am the soft shell of an egg. Not the kind stolen and mass-produced for human consumption, but the kind that holds what's grown. Then let's it out. Poems to my name's one. If I had been born with a penis, my parents would have called me Errol, brave. Instead, they named me after a flower. Kids at school used to call my mum hula hoops because they couldn't pronounce her name. For this reason, my parents chose something that others would be able to wrap easily around their tongues like a lollipop. I was shaped by English children since before we could play bulldog in the school playground. They still called me by the wrong name. My name is not Turkish. It's Arabic, despite my parents being the most non-committal Muslims I know. At the pinnacle of the so-called war on terror, my grandmother added these words to her goodbye when I left her home after dinner. Don't tell them we're Muslim. How can I not, Nana? It's in my name. My family history reveals itself every time I introduce myself. They will remember I'm Muslim far longer than they will remember what I'm called. They might even pluck flower and replace it with a slur or two. My name marks me as someone to mock and someone to fear. At the US border, the security guard behind the counter stares far too long at my passport. He asks so many background questions he will soon know me better than my white partner, who is stamped straight through. We have anglicised our surname to the point that nobody knows what my real name is. And when I was a kid, I didn't mind because the English sounding way had the word cat in it and I was a child who was very fond of animals. In Turkish culture, we take our dad's first name as our surname. My parents left that tradition behind as well. I carry my dead grandfather's first name as my surname, wrongly pronounced, at every introduction. Oh, that's exotic. How do you say that? I've been asked many times, only to give back the wrong pronunciation and still hear people trip over the letters like a skipping rope playground games. Where are you from? They ask. I'm from my names. I say. Poems to my names too. I'm glad my parents didn't call me Errol. 
The only cultural reference British people have to the name Errol is the daft owl in Harry Potter. I wouldn't trust J.K. Rowling with a trans kid. Why would I trust her with myself? Errol means brave. I get stared or shouted at every time I use a public bathroom and I still pee. Does that make me brave? This is my boy name. Jan Errol. I only want you to read it with the correct pronunciation. Imagine that C is a J and you are rolling your tongue out like a red carpet as you deliver it. Jan. 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 I refuse to be an easily pronounceable name. Instead, I will be a name that sits on your lips as hesitant as my gender. You can look it up if you'd like. Poems to my name's free. To lose my name would be to lose my culture. I don't want to have to pick between my transness or Turkishness. Gay bars do that for me. Family gatherings do that for me. Whenever a well-meaning person asks me if I'm going to change my name because I'm trans, I'm transported to my grandparents' living room, listening to my dead dad tell stories of the wimpy bar he worked at when they first moved to London to get away from the Cyprus war. Renaming myself would pull me into Western ideas of transness and away from my home, into and away from my home. Because I am a Western idea of transness, just like I'm a Western idea of queerness, just like I am a Western idea of Turkishness. I'm trying to unlearn myself while learning myself. When you say community, I think barracks and baklava, pride flags and queer poetry nights, chosen family and family who will always calls me the wrong pronoun but never stop inviting me round for fasulya and köfte. In Turkish, my shortened name means summer. It also means to write. Uzun ince bir yoldayım Gidiyorum gündüz gece Bilmiyorum ne haldeyim Gidiyorum gündüz gece Gündüz gece Gündüz gece, gündüz gece Bilmiyorum ne haldeyim Gidiyorum gündüz gece Gündüz gece, gündüz gece Gündüz gece Saçımı kesebilir misin? I wait for a no. Wait for him to tell me I'm not a boy or I can't fool him or gays aren't welcome here. Instead, he pulls out a chair and offers me a seat. Asks me how I'd like my hair cut. I haven't done this in so long. I've been afraid of barber shops, taught myself how to fade and do step cuts, how to sculpt the back and sides, how to cut around the ears. But now here I am, in a berber in Istanbul. His hands run shampoo through my hair and I catch myself closing my eyes. I'm ashamed to admit it, that I needed this gentleness from an older man after the guard at Top Kappa Palace wouldn't let me use either bar from yesterday. I needed this gentleness 
this acceptance, this uh, knowledge that my transness and my queerness, queerness and my Turkishness can coexist to somebody other than myself. Teşekkür ederim, amca. Uzak gözü kür görünce My darlings, I don't know how to tell you this. We've come to the last performer of the evening. I know, I know. Hold for upset, hold for upset. But the show must go on. My goodness, I love this next performer. One of my favorite cabaret performers in London. They hold no bars. They're gonna give you everything they've got. Put your hands together, stomp those feet, make some noise for Shakona Fire! Fire. Fire. This piece called Woke Up. <sighs> step right up, step right up. Gather around if like me you are tired and fed up. Let me explain. I wake up, rub my eyes and sometimes smoke way too much. <laughs> I'm scared to open my phone because that's the one thing that really makes me sick. Dizzy. And every time, all I can do is sigh. Yes, that's right, it's the bi-weekly pageant for the next woke white guy. Please, Tell me how much you like my skin, how your tolerance can be so high, but my patience is wearing thin. I'm not sure if anyone mentioned, but I'm not a fetish, a prop or an experience. My skin is the constant reminder of the fight of occasional white interference. Oh my God, why so touchy? I'm sorry? Why are you so mad? Excuse me. I'm a true ally. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. An ally listens, speaks and communicates with us. No anger. What I can see is the constant bullshit of a keyboard gangster. Every time I open my phone it makes me sick, anxious, my skin taken over by fever. But please... Don't cry for me, because I am not your Argentina. I am beautiful, intellectual and a sexy being, boo. And I am intelligent enough to know that I am not going to sleep with you. And no, I'm not angry or insecure. I'm merely pointing out how hard it is to endure this pain, frustration, and yes, yes, occasional anger. Okay, fine. You got me. That's right. But it still makes no sense of how hard I will continue and have continued to still fight. Bleeding out of our hearts to our very core. Is this the dream that my heroes spoke out for? But I'm fine. I understand that things aren't always great. Days can be filled with rage and excuse. So forgive me if the speech has come too late. But I love me, you, and we. And that is why I speak to you now, while my mouth flows like the ties, flowing in such a breeze, in no natural way no one can describe. <sighs> okay, 
I think I'm done. I guess this black frustration has finally won, but if I can leave you with one hope, it's not that you tell me I'm brave or that you're finally awake, it's that after you hear this, you stay woke up. This piece is entitled, Who is she today? Who is she today? What person do I choose? When your life is filled with so many options, is there anything else? Looking for something that says, hey, this is me. While trying to hide the insecurities they refuse to see. It's easy being a bad bitch when you were given no other option. Am I Glinda, Elphaba, am I Dorothy or Toto? Funny how your imagination can have such a cost when all you want to do is toss, toss, toss. Let's go down the line. The party girl. The classy woman. The shy person. The black bitch. What is my style? She smokes, drinks, and maybe looks at you wondering what you think I think. Sitting here. Deciding what part of myself, what fraction of me will stay. Wondering what reaction will last longer than just today. Desperately seeking a sense of normal. Some chase the next gig. While I sit here alone discussing the politics of my next wig. Do I think too much? Or not enough? Whenever I write, it's never once upon a time. Remember that line about options? Too much, not enough. But too much from me could put him or them or her in a fuss. I write and write and write and yes, more writing, trying to find an end to my next line while simultaneously hoping it will somehow begin to rhyme. Who is she today? Who am I tomorrow? The answer that I can give is just hollow. Because no matter what, I'll never be the same. After tomorrow. After, after, after tomorrow. tomorrow. After tomorrow. After tomorrow. This piece is called The Other Black Drag Queen. Let's hear it for the queens who love looks, pose and occasionally stunt. The first time I ever saw one, I said, wow. And in the same breath, I felt a beat, a pause, confusion and frustration. And no, this is not me writing about my own humiliation. I'm here as me. But I can't help but feel, do they see me as we? This scene is dominated by so many things I can't relate and I hold my head in my hands wondering if I say this too late. I see, I see, I see. I see bald heads with a match of thick socks. People on Twitter saying trans aren't valid so kick rocks looking out for the next viral tick tock tick tock isn't it funny how bitch's biggest fear is the algorithm clock i'm nothing like you so why don't you just go ahead and take your best shot why do we even care half the time i've always had this feeling and of course you think it must be me but now looking back i can see all the things that i can never unsee I wasn't confused, I was bruised. 
it wasn't fear, it was just too unclear. Then it was anxiety, but I guess that thought just brushed by me. Now I know it was never just tension. Now I see these images are filled with sparkling deception. Be free. Be you. Why is this here? So embedded in the fabric we know as drag. I move my mind to the peaceful section because nobody should continue to look down on their own reflection. I'm sorry if I'm not good enough. (laughs) just kidding I don't care I will continue to be me loving my skin and body because I can my voice will be loud because it can my black excellence will be proud my legs slay all day wander round tell the stage tell the flash who me (laughs) as my beauty levitates around like a warm summer breeze Okay, I think this is it. This is the end of the spoken cocoon. So I guess it's back to a Zoom. But if I could leave you with one thing, don't be afraid to be alone in your room. Yours sincerely, the other black drag queen, a.k.a. Shakona Fire. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Shakona, for your energy this evening. And thank you to all of the performers this evening for giving us your time, your energy, and your creativity. And thank you to Forest Gate Pride for putting on this fabulous event. But do you mind if I do one more for you? One more to send us on our merry way. Now this next performance is a song that I love dearly and I really want you to listen to the message of this song, especially at an event like this. Without further ado, my name's Crystal Lubricant and this has been Forest Gate Pride. Take care, look after yourselves and we'll be together soon. Mwah! Love you all! Good night! Good night. On nights like this When the world's a bit amiss And the lights go down Across the trailer park I get down, I feel had Feel on the verge of going mad And then it's time to punch the clock I put on some makeup And turn up the tape deck And pull the wig down on my head Ooh Suddenly I miss Midwest Midnight checkout queen Until I head home And I put myself to bed I look back on where I am from Look at the woman I've become And the strangest things seem suddenly routine I look up from my mouth on the rocks A gift wrapped wig still in the box Of towering velveteen I put on some makeup And some Laverne Baker And pull the wig down from the shelf Suddenly I miss Beehive 1963 Until I wake up and I turn back to myself (laughs) 
<laughs> Some girls, they have natural ease. They wear it any way they please. With their French tip curls and perfume magazines. Wear it up, let it down. This is the best way that I've found To be the best you've ever seen I put on some makeup And I'll turn up the 8-track I'm pulling the wig down from the shelf Oh no, suddenly I miss Farrah Fawcett from TV until I wake up and I turn back to myself. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Shag by level four, Dorothy Hamill do. Sausage curls, chicken wings, it's all because of you. With your blow dried feather back, Tony Hungry too. Flip throw, frizz flop, it's all because of you. It's all because of you. It's all because of you. Okay, everybody, I put on some makeup, turn up the eight track, I'm pulling the wig down from the shelf, oh come on, suddenly I'm this punk rock star from stage and screen, and I ain't never, I'm never coming back. Yay!